Prosecutors called as their first witness Santa Fe County Sheriff's Deputy Nicholas LaFleur, one of the first to respond to the scene at Bonanza Creek Ranch. At any point in time, did Mr. Baldwin tell you that he didn't pull the trigger of the gun? I believe he told me he was holding the gun. Um, I believe in the beginning when I was leaving the church, one of the guys said that Baldwin had pulled the trigger. Um, so just off of what was told. Now, both the prosecution and the defense, they pointed out issues in the way that LaFleur went about separating witnesses, including Baldwin, so that they couldn't speak to each other. And you've been very candid that you've, you made some mistakes at the scene, right? Yes. And that you've learned since then about some of these mistakes, right? Yes. You've said hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Yes. And, you know, you can Monday morning quarterback decisions, but you made them in the field, right? Yes. Okay. And you've said that based on your training and experience, you know that if witnesses are left to speak to each other, they can taint each other's memories, right? Yes. All right, let's talk about it. Joining me right now, criminal defense attorney, former Miami-Dade County prosecutor, my good friend, Mark Iglarsh, joins us. He's been following the case very closely. Always love having Mark, even though he looks so much better in that suit than I do. But here's the point. So I want to talk about opening statements right now. What did you make of it? I can guess where you stand on it. Okay, first of all, I don't think these charges ever should have been brought. I think they're meritless. I think even the prosecutors know that this doesn't rise to the level of recklessness and my concern, having just seen that clip of his defense lawyer, is he was reading his opening statement. My friend, I understand looking down at a couple of notes, but look these jurors in the eyes like I'm looking at all of you. Feel for your client and say he had every reason to believe that that gun had blanks in it because they hired someone whose sole job was to ensure that the gun didn't have live rounds. So, so he was an actor, and he merely pulled the trigger like any actor would. But can we talk I about that, that for that a passion. second? Let's, let, let's talk about that for a second, sure. right? So it was something let's to admit it. to the jury mm -hmm. that, you know, he, if he pointed the gun, he had the right to do it, which is a little bit strange because, A, Alec Baldwin said he didn't pull the trigger, but number two, you would have to accept oh. that he pulled the trigger while pointing it at another human being. Is that really a concession? that his, his side should have made at the beginning? Okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Let, let me just step back and say that the prosecutors are running with that piece of evidence that Alec Baldwin clearly did to help himself in the court of public opinion. We know he pulled the trigger. Of course he pulled the damn trigger. But he made that foolish statement. He didn't need to say that. It hurt him in his criminal case. They need to come out and say... He pulled the trigger, folks. But he shouldn't he have pulled did the trigger. It because it, he thought it was, the gun it was not was necessary. Safe. It was a rehearsal. And if he's pointing it at crew members, that's the case right there. And by the way, even if you don't believe that's the case, I'll ask you, Mark, real quick before we even before we finish up. I want to play this. This is number two. I think that it's not even the day in question. It's everything that happened before that's more problematic. Let's play this real quick. The evidence you will see will paint a real life picture of a real life workplace where this defendant mishandled this gun. You will see him using this gun as a pointer to point at people, to point at things. You will see him cock the hammer when he's not supposed to cock the hammer. You will see him put his finger on the trigger when his finger's not supposed to be on the trigger. If we're, if we're talking manslaughter, recklessness, negligent, how do you reconcile that? My friend, he didn't go to the cafe and grab a random stranger's weapon and then in reckless disregard of whether it has blanks or live rounds, start playing around with the gun. What he did on set was with the belief that that gun was no more lethal than a squirt gun. He would have no reason to think that there were live rounds in there. And at worst, call it negligence. Then he pays money in civil court. But it's not a willful and wanton disregard of human life, which is a much higher standard for criminal court. You need recklessness. You don't have it, and the prosecutors know that. Well, at this point, he's facing this charge, and if you say it's negligence, that could be a very big problem for him. And look, this is the start of the case. I'm very curious to see where it goes. I know the prosecution took a big hit this week because they can't introduce evidence of him as a producer to show that he's criminally liable. True. That's a big loss for the prosecution, but we're at the start of it. Love talking about this with Mark Iglarsh. Good seeing you, friend.
Thank you, my friend. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.